Good morning and welcome to the Gresham Technologies PLC Annual General Meeting Proceedings. Throughout this recorded presentation, attendees will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just click Q&A, scroll to the bottom, type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question submitted today. However, all questions will be reviewed with responses published on the Investor Meet Company platform where appropriate to do so. I'd now like to hand you over to Peter Simmons, non-exec chair. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Paul, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to the annual general meeting of Gresham Technologies PLC. It's now 11 a.m., and I am therefore pleased to open the meeting. I can confirm that a quorum of members is present. Before I start, I'd like to let everyone know that we will be shortly turning to the resolutions being proposed at the meeting. If any of the shareholders who are following the meeting online have any questions that they'd like, like to raise specifically relating to the resolutions, could you please submit them now via the Investor Meet Company platform? And I just stress that's questions relating to the resolutions. Um, we will be having a further session after the formal AGM to deal with more general business questions. So that's a request for any questions in relation to the resolutions. I will now read out the company's AGM statement, which probably most of you will have seen was released via RNS at 7 a.m. this morning. I am pleased to report that the company has made a positive start to the year with a number of encouraging clarity orders from both existing and new clients across the group. And it, that also includes the recently announced 6.3 million subscription agreement with an existing tier one bank customer, which highlights our ability to land and expand within our largest accounts. Also, the acquired Electra business, which is now an integral part of the group, is also performing well. Greater regulation and compliance and board oversight of risk management all continue to, to drive demand for our control and automation solutions in financial services, as evidenced by the pleasing growth in our pipeline. This combined with strong financial, a strong financial position and our ongoing investment in the group's resources underpins the board's confidence in our ability to continue to deliver profitable organic growth in line with our plans. We look forward to reporting further progress in the second quarter and will provide an update at the time of our interim, interim results in July 2022. I will now turn to matters of the meeting. Notice of the meeting has been available for the statutory period, so we propose to take the notice of the annual general meeting as read. For convenience, the resolutions will now be shown on the screen in a condensed form. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and at this point, we will take any questions in relation to the resolutions being proposed. So does anybody in the room have any questions in relation to the resolutions? No? that we're not and Tom you're looking on screen have we had any submitted by the investor meet company platform uh, there are not any questions in relation to the resolutions okay so obviously as there were no questions uh, we can now move on to the vote which is being conducted by a poll Jonathan uh, could you please collect any outstanding poll cards from the room if there are any no, 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 no. So I can confirm that a significant number of proxy votes have been lodged in advance and Jonathan is about to display those on the screen. So hopefully everybody can read those. As you can see, there is significant support for all of, re all of the resolutions, although there is a slightly lower level of support for resolution three, which relates to the approval of directors remuneration. The board welcomes shareholder views and feedback on all aspects of the annual report and accounts, including the subject of remuneration. Based on the proxy votes lodged in advance, we've already conducted some preliminary consultations in this regard. And I can confirm that the company intends to further consult and engage with relevant shareholders to fully understand their views. An update of this engagement, including any potential adjustments to future remuneration arrangements will be published within six months as well as in our final uh, annual report for the current financial year. Jonathan, can we move on now? And if you could uh, confirm the results of the poll votes, please. Thank you, Peter. I can confirm that all resolutions have been duly passed with the requisite majority, with the final results being substantially the same as the proxy votes lodged in advance, which are visible on screen. The final AGM results will be announced after the meeting by RMS. Thank you, Jonathan. 
uh, and thank you uh, to all of our shareholders for their support and also for their um, your voting on these resolutions. So uh, I think that formally concludes the uh, formal business of this AGM, which is now closed. And now that the formal meeting is closed, the board is uh, available for um, more general business questions uh, and, and we'll run a, a Q&A session. Now, um, I'm sure there will be questions coming in via the platform as we move through, but we have had some questions submitted in advance. So to kick the proceedings off, I'll read some of those out and get the relevant members of the board to provide answers. So let's start with uh, the first question on, on this list here, which is about the uh, Electra acquisition that we uh, obviously uh, talked about in the annual report. So perhaps Ian, I'll, I'll read this question out and perhaps you'd answer this one. Can you give any further colour on how the Electra integration is going? And also, are the internal teams responding positively? How are the sales team being retrained to, to cross sell the new products? Um, well, thank you for the question. And it's a good one because obviously Electra's significant investment for us. And of course, it's material to our future growth in the US market. Um, so I'm pleased to say it is going very, very well. Um, I, I guess to give you some color around that, um, number one, the team itself, um, extremely high levels of uh, retention of the team, and it's a pretty good, talented team. Uh, number two, um, customer retention levels are very high. Uh, and of course, the price in terms of the deferred consideration is strongly linked to uh, retention of the installed base. Um, beyond that, in terms of integration, um, we've made really good progress and set ourselves a goal that we start uh, 2022 financial year um, with the new organization in place. And uh, 1st of January, we had a new global organization. Uh, we've integrated the teams in terms of sales, pre-sales, delivery, customer support, research and development, as well as, of course, all of our business operations teams. Um, and we are moving forward really since 1st of January as one company in the market, um, a single brand and a single set of products. So very pleased with how that's going. Um, and the specific question around are the sales teams trained? We absolutely have cross-trained um, right across the sales team and of course, pre-sales and delivery as well. We've got more to do, it's an ongoing task, but but I think uh, you know I'd say less than a year in really delighted with how it's going um, and obviously we'll share more about the financial performance um, in a few months time at the half year but no really pleased with it at this stage good okay thank you Ian. um actually on a related topic uh, we have a question here that says are you looking at more acquisitions so uh, obviously you need to be careful what you say but uh, uh, thank you mr chairman that's a big <laughs> question um so I, I guess the way i would say that is we we're always keeping an eye out in the market for um, opportunities um, but you know things do take time and, and Electra is a good example we first engaged with the uh, founders of Electra over four years ago so we, we need to keep engaging with firms that are of interest to us um, but you know the priority um, for us as, uh, us as a business in the you know short term is really two things what one is to make a success of Electra given how material it is to the to the business and the investment that's been made. Uh, and then secondly, to continue to drive the organic growth story. So th those are our priorities, but we will always keep an eye out for interesting opportunities. Um, and, you know, with good support from, you know, our shareholders move quickly if such an opportunity arises, but it's not our focus. Tom, question I think probably best addressed to you, which is about inflation. Um, obviously quite topical. We've seen the Bank of England uh, this morning talking about potentially uh, inflation reaching levels of double figures later this year. And the question we were asked is, are you seeing any indication of wage inflation that is happening across the tech sector in the wider economy? Yeah, thanks, Peter. Good, good question. Um, so we, we certainly are seeing uh, wage inflation across the tech sector, and it's probably fair to say that it's closer to those levels uh, as announced by the Bank of England or warned of, the, uh, warned of this morning um, than, than the what's in the wider economy. Um, we, you'll have seen that we, we disclosed uh, a, a, a rate uh, of salary increase, wage increase across the board 
in the region of five percent in our in our annual report. Uh, we took we took a thoughtful approach to that, and that was weighted very heavily towards those uh, within our employee base who are um, more affected by the increase in cost of living, um, which appears to have been very well received by our employee base. Um, and we'll continue to monitor all of this close, closely as, as uh, time progresses. Okay, thanks, Tom. And I guess a question that's related to that um, for you, Ian, is um, how are you managing talent retention within the business? Uh, ongoing um, challenge and, and opportunity, um, Peter. I mean, I think, first of all, I'd say, you know, Gresham's generally regarded as a great company to be part of. And, you know, our engagement scores reflect that. Um, our um, uh, employee turnover is very low compared to the industry. We're around the 10% mark. Uh, and we work very hard um, on those things. And, you know, what's important to our people, they're treated, you know, fairly with respect, um, that they have interesting work, um, you know, to be doing, um, that uh, there's great development opportunities and growth opportunities. Um, and, of course, that they're paid fairly and competitively you know, along the lines that Tom was referring to. So we work really hard on, you know, all aspects of, um, you know, the team engagement. Um, and um, I think we've got more to do. We've got a very clear plan around, you know, our people and culture uh, dimension um, through this year. And we continue to invest in leadership as well. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things going on to retain talent. And not only that, but to, you know, attract talent into the business because we're a growing business. Um, the next question is probably, uh, again, probably for you, Ian, about the uh, impact of the war in Ukraine and whether that's had any impact on IT, uh, either sort of the, uh, our customers or, or our, our sort of an, our, our, in, our in continued ability to invest in IT. Um, well, I guess, the, uh, let me start just by, by saying what's the direct impact. Um, so, you know, we, we don't have any um operations or customers in the region notably russia belarus or ukraine um, the market generally within technology in financial services has to date um, been largely unimpacted in the sense that we're seeing investment projects continue in terms of technology projects um, and um, you know the drive towards automation and you know, reducing dependency on manual processes remains a very strong driver. So we're not seeing um, it as a direct impact on customer investment plans. Um, and as I said, we don't have um, any operations that are dependent upon uh, you know, people or operations in, in those areas. Um, for full disclosure, I, I should say that we have um, within our roster of um, nearly 300 customers, um, there are two customers um, that have ownership um, of those customers that has you know given us um, uh, a requirement to look at that re that commercial relationship um, and we have taken a decision to step away from two relationships with customers with a immaterial level of uh, impact on us and um, so you know we continue to track the, the situation carefully um, you know in terms of investment plans of our of our customers, of the business that we're doing. But at, at this stage, I think the company is extremely resilient and is, is not um, impacted in any material way. Okay. And the last of the pre-submitted questions is about pipeline. Um, we obviously talked in the AGM statement this morning about a, a growing pipeline. And so really the, the question says, how big is the pipeline? What's the waiting between new and existing customers? And what sort of things are you currently bidding on? Um, yeah, I mean, really interesting question. Um, you know, and I'll, I guess I'll say the pipeline is never, ever big enough. Um, uh, but, but I would say it's in substantially better health than uh, this time two years ago, of course, um, when we were really, you know, in the dark days of the pandemic. And it's really been growing really since the back end of 2020 and throughout uh, 21. So, um, you know, I would say we are at comparable levels now, um, even after closing a very substantial transaction, uh, only a matter of, uh, you know, a week or so ago, the, the pipeline is in good health. 
uh, gives us the coverage that we need for our full year numbers. Uh, and you know, we'll continue to work on it and build for 2023. And in terms of the mix of the pipeline, I think you know one thing that has absolutely changed um, in our favour is, um, you know, a few years ago we were dependent upon um, a you know a roster of new name, new business, you know, to achieve our full year numbers. And of course now with the high levels of recurring revenue, you know, with nearly 300 customers, a substantial proportion of our pipeline is uh, now made up of you know, incremental upgrades and growth within existing accounts, which again is is good for the resilience of the business. Um, you know, but having said that, there is also, you know, a nice list of new name, new business projects of varying sizes and shapes. And, you know, for us, I think success this year would be um, good run rate of existing business, good beat rate of, you know, medium sized new names. Um, and of course, um, you know, we're always, um, you know, focused on bringing some uh, new key accounts into the business as well that will give us the kind of long term growth uh, that you saw in the transaction that was announced only a week ago. Okay, thank you. Tom, you've been looking for the questions that have been coming in online. Any new questions coming? There aren't any that haven't already been answered. Okay, so um, I think at that point, unless anybody in the room's got any questions, uh, we will declare the uh, meeting closed. That's fantastic. Thank you indeed to the board for updating attendees today. Could I please ask attendees not to close the session, to be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the board can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure it would be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the Board of Gresham Technologies PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's annual general meeting proceedings and good afternoon to you all.